We're talking about fruit that's always in season. Isn't that beautiful? Here am I, 73, and guess what? I'm in season. I'm, <laughs> I'm bringing forth fruit. I'm, I'm laying down with fruit. Say sweet fruit, delicious fruit, mature fruit. Wow. Hallelujah. Anybody remember in Solomon where, where the bride invites Jesus, the bridegroom, into the garden? And says what? Invite him to what? To partake of the fruit. Come on. And he said, he said what? Let him come into my garden. And let him eat of his precious fruit. Somebody. Anybody read that beside me? Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Well, let me tell you. God is looking for us to invite him. Remember I tell you, I said, now, I want you to invite him to come upon you. Say, Lord, come upon. I invite you to come upon me and to rest down on me and to clothe me with your person. But let me tell you, God wants you to live a life, a fruitful life, where you can say, Lord, I invite you to come into your garden and to partake of your precious fruit. Somebody, because it's the fruit of what? The Spirit. It's the fruit of, fruit of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to be fruitful. Fruit, more fruit, much fruit, for by their fruit ye shall know where they are, who they are, but where they are in their growth. Some bring forth fruit from what? One to thirty level. Thirty to sixty level. Sixty to the hundred full level. Now look at me. That's only the first stage of your becoming. God wants you to come into what? Say the hundredfold. Now is it whatever is everybody coming into the into the into the hundredfold? No. The Bible tells us some say some. Some will be saved, barely pulling out of the fire. Hating. Say that word. That's a strong word. Hating, hating their garments spotted by the flesh. So they, 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 they didn't have time, say, to clean up. They're saved, barely. Some, not all, some, barely, read it, pulling out of the fire, hating their garments. Who is the bride without spot? without wrinkle, without blemish, without flaw, perfect, complete in him. Hallelujah. That's why they hate it. Because they miss it. Hating. I'm not talking about basic salvation. Hating their garments, spotted by the flesh. That which is what? Flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. Hallelujah. So, so God wants you to bear fruit, what? Say a hundredfold. Now where does a hundredfold place you? Say with me, that brings you into what? Discipleship. Say discipleship. Another word for discipleship is servanthood. Jesus manifests servanthood when he took the bowl of basin after communion, washed the feet of the disciples. This is deity stooping to humanity, showing what? The love of God. God said, if I do this, being your Lord and your master, wash your feet, how much more should you show the love of God to your brother and wash one another's feet? That's why Jesus said to Peter, if you don't let me wash your feet, you have no part with me. When Peter realized the message what Christ was saying, he said, oh Lord, not just my feet, but my head, my head, just give me a bath. Jesus said, but those that are clean need not to be washed. He's not talking about uh, to, clean, to clean your feet. 
this is an expression of the love of God in you, of humility, of servanthood, that I'm no greater than you. I am a servant to you. Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. I think about that. Dear Jesus did that to us, to humanity. He said, I, if you call me Lord, yes I am, but if I be your Lord and Master, wash your feet. Deity, stoop into humanity. You ought to wash one another's feet. In other words, there's no big eyes and little you. When it comes in the spiritual kingdom of God. All right. Then you come into from servanthood to the next level. You say you are forever a servant. The day you quit being a servant, you need to go back to the cross, repent, and do your first works over. Because you lost that servanthood and all that comes with that. Humility. All that comes with that. Now you come into that level, say with me now, of friendship. Where you get to know the one who died for you. You get to know him in relationship. And really, listen to this. Talking to him and him talking to you. Him revealing himself to you in dreams, in visions, by his spirit, by the mouth of his spirit, as, as he leads you, guides you, directs you, as he begins to show you what the Father is showing him. Somebody say, pray, isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. I no longer call you servant. Now I call you friend. Now that you're my friend, I open my heart to you. And I share with you what my Father is sharing and speaking and revealing to me. Wow, you're in the loop. Wow, think of that. Wow, oh, that's powerful. Wow, you're, 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 you're in, in, in the family. You're in with God. Isn't that power? Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah, because now you're what? You're a friend. A servant, you pay your servant. You don't share your heart with a servant. But a friend is different. If you have one friend in a, one friendship in a lifetime, you're blessed. If you have a real, true God friend, you're blessed. They few and far between. You're always, see, I'm growing. Friendship. Here's the journey from 1 to 30, 30 to 60, 60 to the 100 fold. That's called what? The secret of the stairs. Jacob, God's at the top of the ladder. Come up, Jacob. Angels descending and ascending. God at the top looking down at Jacob on the ground, his head on a pillar. Come up, Jacob. Won't you be with me? Come up, Jacob. Friendship. God wants you to always be a friend. Now we like, we, we like, how many of you like Jesus to be your friend? You know, we sing a song, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our cares and whatever, and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in and that's beautiful, and that's good, and that's real. But now flip the coin. God said, I want you to be my friend. How many of you can say, Lord, I want to be your friend. Where you can come at any moment to me. You can talk to me. You can share with me. I want to hang out with you. Come on. I want to hang. I want to hang out with you. I want to know what you're thinking. I want to know what's in your heart. I want to know what's in your mind. I want to know the very intent of your heart. That's relationship. That's friend. 
We see that friendship in the bridal relationship in Solomon. We see it. When he's in love with her and she is in love with him. And we see only one time since the Felina, the flesh got in the way. One time. That's when she was tired. She probably had an exhausting day or whatever. She was worn. And she said, I'm going to turn in. I'm going to wash my feet. I'm going to put on my nightgown. And I'm going to go to bed. So she washed her feet, her face, got ready for bed, put her nightgown on, put her feet up in the bed. And just when she was about to go to bed, she's in the bed, under the cover, the knock came at the door. Let me in. And she said, oh. She said, I don't want to go to no door. She said, I'm tired. I just washed my feet. I just put my nightgown on. I've just got in my bed. And she just waited. And he's knocking. He's knocking. And he doesn't respond. And he leaves. And the moment he leaves, it dawns on her that it is him, not just a knock, not anybody. It is a bridegroom. And she jumped out of bed. Oh, she jumped out of bed. Put a house coat on, flung the door open, ran out in the street, looking east, west, north, south. Have you seen him? She's calling him, and she's run into the watchman. And she said, the watchman is the church. She said, oh, watchman, have you seen my beloved? He said, well, woman, what are you talking about? Have you seen him? My beloved. And he got perturbed and he was carnal and, and he, he was full of flesh, full of self. And he abused her and tore her veil and beat her up and tell her, get out of here, whatever. I mean, and, and she still, she would not give up. And she's running. Have you seen him? She's looking. She's calling. She's, and she finally found she finally find him. And she threw herself at his feet. And she said, oh, I found you. And I will not let you go. And she never let him go since. And she said, I am my beloved. And my beloved is mine. Hallelujah. See isn't that what Paul said? He said, lay hold on eternal life wherewith ye were called. Lay hold of it. Realize the gravity, the power, the impact, the eternity of it, the weightiness of it. Let no man take your crown. Which is passing through this earthly realm. Life is short. Jesus is come. I'm telling you, church, Jesus is it's come. We're come. The sand is fastly sifting through the hourglass. The midnight hour. We're about. We're about a second or two before the midnight hour in God's spiritual eternal time. And you hear. Only those who are looking and prepared will hear the voice of the bridegroom. What will he say? Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And those that were ready will hear. And they will go forth to meet him. Those who are not ready like the foolish virgins will be left, will miss it, and go through the tribulation, take the mark of the beast, and be doomed. Because they had no love for the truth. They did not buy the oil. They had no oil in their vessels. 
they had no oil. They were not filled with the Holy Spirit. And they had no oil in their lamps, which is what the vessel of truth, which is what light. The lamp represents what? Truth and what? Light. Where did God set the word in the lamp? The word of God is nigh thee. Say, even in thy mouth, even in thy heart. So the word is what? Thy word is what? A lamp. Come on, church. Amen. Unto my feet, a light into my path. Where did God set you are that burning and shining lamp? First he called you a candle. But he don't want you to stay a candle. He wants you to become a burning and shining lamp. Like John the Baptist. He said John the Baptist was that burning and shining lamp. And Israel, there was a day when Israel walked in his light. Are you a lamp where others can walk in your light? Where others trust you? Would you say your word has weight to it? Has truth to it? has love in it, that they could trust you, they could depend on you. You understand what I'm saying? Your word has weight, gravity to it. Because you're that lamp. That's where every god fearing preacher should be. That lamp. That, that speak the weightiness of truth. Because the church is what? A pillar of truth. A pillar of truth. And when you don't have the preacher, the deacon, or the members... Not, what did Paul say? I have no greater joy than the children you give me. Walk in truth. Truth. You shall know what? Truth. Jesus is, Jesus is the what? The personified truth. Okay. Fruit. More fruit. Much fruit. Servanthood. Friendship. I'm still pressing. Say with me now. Say sonship. Unto them gave he power to become sons of God. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. We need the Holy Spirit, say with me, to grow. You cannot grow in your flesh. Your flesh will not permit you. Your flesh will fight you. Your flesh lusteth against the spirit. The spirit against the flesh. They are contrary to one another. They don't agree. And the flesh is jockeying for control of you. Somebody's going to control you. Either your flesh or God's spirit. And where the flesh will take you. The flesh will bring you under the law of sin and death. Because in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. And the flesh will kill you and send you to hell. The flesh. The flesh. The flesh. Don't put any value on the flesh. There's no value. Because this flesh is dying every day. It's going to go to the ground and go back to dust. There's no value. God places no value on the body. But he said, while you're living in it, cherish it. Because it's the temple. And I live in the house. Say, God's in the house. Amen. 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 You only got one temple. Take it. Take care of it. Yeah. You know. And uh, don't, don't, you only got one life. Don't shortchange it. Okay. And don't, don't defile the temple. Lest he destroys it. Somebody say amen. amen. That's his word. Amen. For the temple of God is holy, amen. which temple ye are. Somebody say praise God. Amen. Wow. Wow. Think about the gravity of that. I mean, I mean, I mean, that God is in me. Wow. The God of the universe is in my life, is in the temple. Let that sink in. Like, have you ever sat down and, and weighed some of the weightiness of God like Mary and she pondered these things in her heart? Have you, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Like these, this, it's just too big for me. It's, this is heavy. Like, and you sit down like, you just pondered these things, the eternal things, the weighty matters that God says about eternity and about you, about what he has for you and your future. Wow. Wow. 
Wow, wow. So sonship, sonship is huge. Say, I come into that. I grow into that. I mature into that. Heaven is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. All creation groans. Not only we groan within ourselves to wit the redemption of our bodies, but all creation groans, waiting for the change. Like God said to the earth, let there be light. And he spoke life into the, a dead world that was drowned in water. And he said, and the Spirit of God brewed upon the face of the deep and began to separate the waters. Then he said, let there be light. The only, the only planet that God brought life to and, and change was planet Earth. All the planets are out there, but say they're asleep. They're dormant. They're dead. There's no life on it. The Bible tells you that. No life on it. But life's going to come. Like everything's going to open. Like why? Everything's going to come alive. Like, wow. It's like Israel, like the dance is blooming. It's going to, wow, life. Because God is going to what? Speak life into his creation again. Just like he spoke life into the parched crown, dirt crown of Israel. He said, when I bring you back into the land, I, will, I God, will cause the land to live. Wow. Wow. And when the land live, it's going to bring forth what? Life. Anything that lives bring forth what? Life. It's going to bring forth trees and fruits and flowers. And guess what? Israel feed all of Europe fruit. Israel supply all of Europe and Africa flowers and fruit. <laughs> like what? But we see, God said the desert will blossom like a rose. Flowers. They ship flowers all over Europe, all over Africa. Flowers. I've been, I've seen it. Like, what? what? Oh my God. I mean, far as I can see roses. Like, what? Like, no. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. And God gave them the knowledge of the agriculture, which they sell it for billions of dollars to other nations, teaching them how to grow, how, how you could take a desert and, and blossom like a rose. God is with these people. Hallelujah. So, sonship is, that, say, it's a becoming. Under them gave you power to become sons of God. That's, that is coming into maturing servanthood, friendship, sonship. Hallelujah. Amen. God could say, Take this ministry. God can release you. And God say, go into the kingdom. Uh, God, you understand? And you go there without him blowing your nose, changing your diapers. He could depend on you. He can release you in faith where you are solid. You're grown. You're dependable. You're faithful. You will stand through hell. You understand? And God can release you in ministry. God can place you in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Like, like, anybody remember when Elijah was in the cave and Jezebel threatened him? I, I'm going to kill you. And he hid in the cave. And God came to the cave and said, man, great man of God, what are you doing in the cave? And he had this sad story. Oh, you know, I just, I just, and, 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 and I killed the prophets and, 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 and Jezebel, Jezebel threatened my life and, and blah, 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 blah. And, and God said, said, Elijah, <laughs> and he said, he said, you know, you know, and, and, and I'm the only one that's, that's carrying the message and standing. And God said, wait now, Elijah, you're not the only one. I've got 700 more than you that have not bowed their knees to Baal. See, see, see. They, are to they are what? Totally grown sons standing, hadn't bowed their knees to bed. Life is not the only strong one. 700 more. Wow. Where what? They're in ministry. They're standing in the gap. They're fighting hell. They're tearing down the dark places. You understand what I'm saying? They're in the kingdom. They're doing the work of God. That's mature.
mature sons. Yes. But God can say, now I release you. Yes. You've grown. I can trust you. I can depend upon you. You'll reign with you're reigning him, him, you're reigning with him now, and you'll reign with him in eternity. You're governing now, and you'll govern in eternity. You understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Messiah. Wow. Didn't mean to say all that. Anybody enjoying this? Yes. What? Yes. You know the beauty of a spirit-filled church is to have the Lord turn all your plans on his head. And to show up. Amen. And to take you in a whole. Another direction. Amen. Amen. And you better be ready for it. Amen. That's a mature son. Yes. Where God can do that. Right. I'm telling you. Anybody else. You lose it. You get nervous. You. you what, what shall I do? What shall I do? What shall I do? Because. You've never been there. But we come into that where God said, now I can come in any time. You understand what I'm saying? I, I can, and, and you let God, God, you're welcome anytime. Show up. And I'll say, wow, God's here. Like the night, God, God, God in the house. He came in. He came to see us. Wow. Before a prayer was prayed, before we had even acknowledged him, he came in and he showed up and I felt it. And I said three, I said, you feel what I'm feeling here? And, and, and then it just got heavier and you feel the present. And then you felt it, and then you felt it. And then it began, then they begin to move. The prayer, oh, hallelujah, glory to God, amen. Stand with me tonight, hallelujah. I'm gonna pick this up, this ain't going nowhere. Somebody say amen, amen, amen. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. This is, when you have services like this, you can leave the door and say, wow, wasn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You know, you know what I feel what God wants to do here? He wants to raise up this church. Not church like we know it. Raise up this church in a prophetic, in a supernatural manifestation. Where he will come in. Because we have cultivated an atmosphere for him. And he's comfortable with it. He's at ease to come in. You understand what I'm saying? You got to do that. You got to do that. We, because he's looking. The Father seeketh. He's looking. And he's not finding it. The Father seeketh such to worship him. For they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Not just, not just with your song, but with your life. Say my life. With my life. With my walk. With my worship. With my praise. That's real worship. Yes. Amen. That's real praise. Yes. When you become the praise to God. Yes. Present yourself. What? A living yes. sacrifice. Yes. Holy. Yes. Unacceptable yes. to God. Which is your reasonable worship. Your reasonable service. Yes. Is your reasonable worship. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Hallelujah. But where God will come in. And you will see people. Throw down crutches. I'm, I've seen it. I'm, I'm an evangelist. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Where you see people get out of wheelchairs. Yeah. See people heal of chronic back disease. And, and not only disease, but deliverance. Demonic deliverance. Set free. You see people save. Spirit filled. Call in the ministry. You see the fivefold leadership ministry raise up. I mean, I'd like to see a church like that. But that should be normal. Because that's supposed to be what? The church. So, so what we have as the church is a lot of abnormalities. 
Like shouldn't be there. Because there's a lot of sinful flesh, carnal flesh, parading and hindering what God wants to do. A lot of unbelief. God hasn't changed, right? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's just waiting for us to get our act together. Remember when Jesus came, the Bible said Jesus could not do many wonderful works in their midst because of their unbelief. They were stuck in Judaism and law. And Jesus came to bring that new and living way. And they were like the mule. Couldn't get out of the mud. God showed me a church like that. I've seen it. That's what brought me here. I mean, I'm looking for God to raise it up. He's going to have to do it because it's all him. And he's given us glimpses mm -hmm. of what he wants. You need to take it, cherish it. Because uh, what you experience here tonight is not common. It's double rare, triple rare. Where God himself walks in and shows his manifest glory in the festive and the dancing hands of God. You, Without you being involved in it. Amen. You don't want to, I like yes, that. Like what? That. God said, I am God. I don't need no one to help me. Boom, I'm here. I don't need a song. I don't need a prayer. Even those things are good. But I'm God all by myself with them or without them or them. I will move in my power, in my glory, in my grace, fulfilling my good work, my good will, my good pleasure in your midst, in your life. Can we just thank him? Father, I thank you. Thank you for the manifestation of your glory, your power, your spirit. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for, for you showing up and manifesting your glory, your presence to us. Touching, stirring, changing, blessing. But God's the same. We're Sunday morning, Friday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the same yesterday, today, and forever, according to your faith, so be it unto you, in Jesus' name.